Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Neeraj Shah. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll talk about two or three key aspects of uh, mutual funds. And in particular, uh, what should investors do in the current volatile times? Uh, we'll also try and dip a little bit into whether the limits that have been opened up, so to say, for international funds, do they suffice uh, any purpose? Because there, are, there, have been, there has been a rule and then a bit of a pushback to that rule as well. And of course, uh, uh, the a difficult question to answer maybe for our guests today, but we'll ask them that if people have lump sum amounts, which are the best avenues within the mutual fund space to invest in? My guest today, Nirav Panchmatya and Anand Ladda. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for joining in. Good afternoon to each of you. Uh, can I start off with the first topic, Nirav? I'll yeah. start off this with you. Uh, if people want to make a switch in their SIP portfolio, and you'll have to make some assumptions here, right? Because different people, there's no standard size that fits all. But try and make an assumption and give us a hypothesis that if there's a certain <coughs> investing into X, Y, Z, has this kind of risk appetite, et cetera, then what are the SIPs that you would recommend that this investor switches out from and goes into what? Okay, okay. Thank you, Neeraj, for having me once again. Uh, so first and foremost, if I can, you know, uh, waver a little bit from your question. Volatility. We have limited time, Nirav. So okay. yes, you can, but no. limited. Okay. limited. Yeah. So, so SIPs are the best way of attacking low, uh, volatility. We know SIP are the best tool to allow you to take advantage of something known as a rupee cost averaging or a dollar cost averaging. Second, don't do SIPs in thematic funds or sector funds because sectors are seasonal. SIPs is for medium to long term. So if somebody is doing some SIPs in any of the sector fund, we've seen over the last three years, many sectors have come into favor and gone out of favor. Okay, when you are investing with a three, five, seven and 10 year horizon, avoid themes, avoid uh, sectors, go into equity diversified fund. An ideal mix would be a mix of large cap, mid cap and small cap. So I would say a ratio of 50 to 60% in large cap, 30% uh, in mid cap and 20% in small cap would do wonders with your SIP portfolio. So we can take any amount, let's say somebody has one lakh to invest every month in SIP. So I'll say 50,000 you do in a large cap and or a flexi cap fund, uh, another 30% in one or two mid cap fund and another 20% in small cap fund. So if a particular investor, now it depends on a risk profile, but if a particular investor is having thematic sector funds, I'll say stop and go into equity diversified fund. You don't become a fund manager. You don't take a call on which sector is good, which sector is bad, because uh, you, you, know, you know the sectoral calls keep on going wrong. Yeah. Experience has told us ki, it is very difficult to take, even for expert to take a sectoral call. But so Nira, I, guess, my, yeah. I guess this is an answer for all seasons. You're not saying this particularly yes. for the current season. This is an answer for all seasons and it holds true for this season also, all the more. Okay. Okay. Fair and, call. And I'll come back to names as well. Nirav, sorry, you yeah. wanted to finish your point? Yeah, and and, and the period, uh, you know, this, this was a very interesting period, period from 14 Jan 2020, which was the last Sensex peak around 42,000. We fell 38%. We went back 130% on the Sensex level. And again, we are down 15%. So 14 Jan 2020 to 20 June 2022, when we are talking today, uh, has, has shown, you know, all the dark... Uh, darkness yeah. of you know equities and all we've seen two rises we've seen two falls and again we'll see a rise so if a particular fund equity diversified fund has done well in this period it will do well in any period so this was a laboratory that we will talk about it later during the show okay anant uh, uh, to you and i want to kind of narrow it down if we can to the specific time because these times are slightly different than what the previous ones have been right so therefore from that perspective if you can that is anant the same question to you. Where is it that people should put a halt on their SIPs because the time may demand so and switch into something else that might be more pertinent at the current point in time? First thing, thank you so much, uh, Neeraj, for having me. I'll give you, uh, I'll try and give you direct three to call uh, actions or three pointers which we can immediately take action on. First is, supposedly, if we have some SIPs which is going on or if we have some amount which is placed in long-term debt and we are trying to take a duration call, I feel presently we should be more focused towards floating rate funds and we should keep our portfolio concentrated towards uh, low duration funds or maybe we can say for that matter, uh, accrual based funds. Second important point. Why so? Is, Sorry, why so? Uh, because our viewers would love to understand why you're saying that. 
Yeah, uh, because uh, since interest rates are rising and uh, as uh, directly communicated by Fed that we can at least expect two more rate hikes in such a volatile period, if we have long duration fund, negative impact because of M2M can really hurt our portfolio. And when an investor is investing in debt fund, his main purpose is to make sure that there is no capital loss. To ensure that it is better to be placed with floating interest rate fund, especially uh, in the right, rising interest rate cycle. Because as interest rate rises, probably your fund manager will also put his amount in uh, uh, high yield securities and your overall portfolio returns will be taken care of. Second, okay. this, is an, this, is a, uh, this is somewhat aggressive call, which I am personally taking. If you have some amount or some SIPs which are going in BAPs or balance advantage funds, and if your suitability permits you, I think right now is the right time to allocate some amount to equities and uh, be aggressive on equities. Uh, if you want to really make money in markets, you have to be aggressive on equities when things are tough. Presently, things are actually tough from, from last seven months, from November 2021, we are seeing some kind of volatility and some kind of correction. So if your suitability permits, probably this is the right time to invest in equity, SIPs or equity funds. Third and final point. Suppose if you have a goal for which you were investing from long time and it is due in the next three years, now this money has to be either in FDs or in simple floating interest funds. That's it. Don't take equity risk for short term period. These can be simple three call to actions. Okay. Now, can I request you and then I'll get to Nero for the names as well. Anand, can you... Uh, give us some names which people might also think about. Now, the standard disclaimer viewers is that the names given by either of our guests are not necessarily their exhaustive list. So they may have probably in their mind five funds, but they might recommend one or two. There might also be more that you can think of and you need to do your own research before you try and even think of uh, going for the recommendations that have been given, either in the terms of the call to action or in terms of the funds. With that disclaimer, Anand, can you give us some names? Uh I'll start with multi-cap fund. Presently, Nippon multi-cap fund, I know it is a it is comparatively newer fund, but it is beautifully placed. Uh, Salish is managing that fund quite well. Uh, its P ratio is around 20-21. PB ratio is somewhere around 3. It is comfortably placed, heavy weighted on financials, services, and capital goods. These are probably some of the uh, sectors where impact of inflation is comparatively limited. Uh, it's a multi-cap fund, so you get exposure of both large cap, mid cap and some exposure of small cap as well. So this can be one fund which we can study. Next two funds I'll try and give each from small cap and one from mid cap category. If I talk about small cap, Tata small cap fund is very interesting, but that is comparatively an aggressive fund. If I talk about valuations, uh, PE ratio is somewhere around 18. It has a good portfolio of 40, 45 stocks. Uh, PB ratio is somewhere around 2.3 to 2.4. Services and capital goods are heavy weighted in this stock. And this is obviously managed by Satish, who is even managing uh, Tata mid cap fund quite well. Uh, but because of the size of Tata small cap fund, I find it uh, really attractive. Uh, and it's uh, and his uh, co-fund manager is Chandra Prakash. Finally, if I talk about third final fund, that will be comparatively defensive fund uh, in mid cap space. ICICI mid-cap fund, especially because it is taking care of uh, drawdown mm -hmm. risk comparatively better. P ratio around 23, PB ratio around 3, 60, yeah. 65 good stocks. These can be three funds which we can look for. No, and Anand, just one follow-up though. Uh, I was trying to stick these funds to the recommendations that you made. So when you're talking about getting out of uh, the long duration funds, for example, the first recommendation that you made, uh, looking at the current times and getting into short-term funds, so what, are there any funds that people should keep in mind from that recommendation perspective? Uh, I think ICICI floating interest fund, it has good amount of AUM and a stable floating interest fund with a duration less than 0.7. This can be an interesting fund to look look in, the, in that category. And even Great. HDFC is good in that category. Okay. Thanks for that, Anand. Nirav, you had mentioned getting out of thematic funds and getting into uh, a portfolio allocation of sorts. Now, let's try and think about the maximum allocation that you mentioned, which I presume 50% was to large cap funds, if I'm not wrong. In that category, are there any funds that you recommend and why? Yeah. So, as I said, I'll recommend a bouquet. A bouquet which will cons uh, consist of one flexi cap, one large cap, one mid cap, and one small cap. 
Okay. Right. So the large in flexi cap you ask. So in the large cap category, I'll recommend a fund from the Canara Rubico Fund House, Canara Rubico Large Cap Fund. I okay. believe it is a very stable performer over a very large period, and especially the period between 14 Jan 2020 and uh, uh, 20 22nd June 2022 when we are talking. Uh, very well diversified uh, fund, extremely good fund manager. The another fund that I'll recommend in flexi cap category is Parak Pari Flexi Cap Fund. Parak Pari Flexi Cap Fund, uh, Neeraj has uh, pro proven that it has taken the test of times very brilliantly, right? In spite of not being allowed to invest in international equity, the Indian portfolio is managed based on value style or on a guard style and has done phenomenally well. So these two uh, would be the, you know, the basis of any equity portfolio. I mean, these are the main key uh, funds that you should have in your portfolio. And then to add alpha to the portfolio, you can go for a mid cap and a small cap fund. If you allow me, I'll give those. Yes, yes, please do. Please do. Now. Okay. So in mid cap category, I would have, I have chosen PGIM India mid cap fund. Again, it has stood the test of times. It has been an outperformer through and through, even on the downside. In fact, Neeraj, I first see the drawdown while selected in a fund and then I go for returns. Risk is, uh, risk adjusted return is what we should look at and not only uh, returns. So PGIM India mid cap has weathered the storm very well. And on small cap side, I'll go with a very, uh, Unique proposition from the quant fund house, quant small cap fund. Yeah, well, quant funds have done reasonably well off late. So yeah, it's yeah. just recommendation. Just today, they've come under the fairly interesting note as well. Okay, uh, yeah. great. Uh, both of you, thank you so much for that. those set of recommendations. Now, uh, Anand, the second topic, I'll start with you. Um, can you give us, uh, can you tell us whether people can now invest into the international schemes or no and if so should they do it at the current juncture or they're better off sticking to the domestic schemes see uh, if you are in, if you are thinking of investing in us market just because in last decade that is from 2011 to 2020 us market has outperformed indian market i would like you to rethink about it because it has always happened in history that what has performed for uh, 10 years probably it underperforms in the coming decade Starting from 90s, 80s to 1990s, Japan was outperforming. What happened with Japan post that, we all know. 90s to 2000, gold was outperforming. 2000 to 2010, emerging markets like India outperformed. Then 2011 to 2020, US markets have outperformed. So just because it has performed in last 10 years, and you are a retail investor with a limited amount, and you are randomly thinking to invest in the US market, I think there is no need of it. But if your portfolio is sizable, for example, if you have uh, 50 lakhs of portfolio and if you want to diversify it, obviously you can choose some of the uh, international funds and uh, you can have limited exposure. If you don't know anything about international market, I think for a know nothing investor, even index fund is, uh, is, a, is a good solution for investing in international markets. For example, investing in S&P 500 for funds for that matter. But your purpose of investing in US market should be diversification and not just because it has uh, given good returns in last 10 years. Okay, but but people are allowed to invest in international funds now. Yes. There's a change with, of rule that has happened, right? They are allowed with limited restrictions. Okay, okay. Yeah. A fair call. Nina, do you have some clarity here? Because I was also reading about how, for example, it's only, only limited to the, uh, to the redemptions that have happened yes. and not FTM. And yes. therefore, somebody said that maybe PPFS, a fund that you recommended, might not be able to invest too much into international because they haven't had too many redemptions. So true, uh, true. what kind of funds are, are available? And again, the same question, should people do that or should people stick to domestic equities? True. So first and foremost, Neeraj, uh, for the next decade, one of the best asset classes would be Indian equity. So no two thoughts about it. Next decade belongs to India, GDP-wise, economy-wise. Post-COVID, India has come out as a much stronger and much better economy than any of the developed economies or even including China. So if you're not betting on Indian equity via the mutual fund route, taking professional advice, you're going to miss out on one of the best asset classes. You can never say it will be the best, but it will be a top quartile asset class in the world. Having my 80-85% portfolio in Indian equities, there is always a room for diversification. So 5 to 7 to 10% is the maximum that I would recommend somebody to have exposure to international equity. Amongst international equity, US equity as an asset class has done phenomenally well, as uh, as my co-host has talked about, and because especially because there's been a huge correction. So as we are talking, Nasdaq is down 33%, it's down one third. 
Some of the tech stocks are down anywhere between 70 to 90 percent. This is the opportunity that my guru Warren Buffett always waits for. So I would recommend a small exposure, especially when the wind, you know, it was ironic, Neeraj, that uh, the uh, international fund window was closed exactly when the US market was falling, right? So this is the time actually you should allow Indian investors. I believe the period would be very limited. The uh, amount, RBI has not increased the limit of in, uh, for mutual funds to invest internationally. It is only because of some of the redemptions. And it's ironical people have redeemed when the market has fallen. Those redemptions shouldn't have happened, but it comes as an opportunity for investors who couldn't get in, entry into these market. I would suggest a fund, Mire Asset FANG, which has a top 10 FANG stocks in its portfolio, or any of the NASDAQ index fund. People should take exposure in a limited way, not more than 5 to 8% of your portfolio. And you should do it in two or three tranches or via the STP and forget it. Because, you know, we being Indians, our children are wanting to go abroad. If you don't have dollar assets, only rupee depreciation is going to take away some of your Indian equity returns. Only from that perspective, we should all have exposure to international equity, but don't go overboard with it. Fair call. Thanks, uh, both of you, uh, for yeah. the same. Uh, Anand, did you give me a fund name recommendation? Sorry, I've missed it. Uh, first, my first choice is S&P 500 direct index. Second, if I talk about fund, DSP US FlexiCap fund is a interesting fund. It is kind of a multi-cap fund for international equity. So that is something which I really find interesting. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh, the, the third conversation, <clears throat> and, and, and Nirav, a lot of people might uh, get uh, their bonuses or raises become effective you know, yes. in, in the current season, typically it happens with a bit of a delay as it normally would. So yes. people might get a slightly higher lump sum than what they might need. So yes. if they have that, mm. instead of a fixed deposit, mm. or maybe a fixed deposit, I don't know, but let's assume from a mutual fund perspective, yes. is there an avenue where you recommend that people make that lump sum investment? And why? Yes. yes. And where? Okay. So two-pronged strategy for lump sum. SIPs is a no-brainer. Increase your SIP till it pinches you. Till on 25th, you have fight with your spouse. You should have that kind of SIP, especially in volatile times like that. Second, as far as lump sum is concerned, do two prompt strategy. One, do a uh, 25 to 30 week STP, park it into a liquid fund, choose a target equity diversified fund and do an STP. So here we are copying what SIP does for you, rupee cost average. Another, if you want to go directly, the risk with the first strategy of doing an STP is, what if this is the bottom in the market? We don't have an answer. But if this is the bottom, you have missed an opportunity. Another better way is, Neeraj, over the last couple of years, we've seen this, some of the asset allocator funds. So we had balanced funds initially over the last 10, 15 years, followed by something known as a balanced advantage fund. A balanced fund was a passive strategy, 70% equity, 30% debt, 5, 10% here and there. But it, it didn't move the needle much. Then there was something known as a balanced advantage fund, which was a more active version and an aggressive version of a balanced fund where the equity component could go anywhere between 40 to 80. And now we have asset allocator and multi-asset fund. So multi-asset and asset allocator fund can invest into equity. It can invest into arbitrage and it can invest into debt and multi-asset fund can also invest into gold. So from time to time, these companies, some of the funds have really mastered the art of allocating the fund at the right time in the right asset class. And these products are emotionless. The biggest enemy of an Indian equity, of an, any equity investor world over uh, is emotions. We divest when we should be investing and we invest when we should be divesting. So yeah. let us do a back, let, let, let it give, be given to funds, you know, who have done the back testing and who have really proved their method. So if, do you want me to name the funds? Yes, please. Okay. So for the one of the first funds I'll name, name is Kotak Multi-Asset uh, Allocator Fund of Funds. It is a fund of fund. As I said, it can invest into equity. It can invest into debt, arbitrage, and gold. And especially when I tested this particular product over a period of 14 Jan 2020 till uh, today, uh, till 28 June 2022, you know, uh, it has almost beaten the census. Now, this fund on an average is 30 to 40% in equity, yet it has beaten the census. And the rule number one it followed was, it's a drawdown hua, it didn't win down much. That is the first rule, you know, Warren Buffett has these two rules, which everybody knows, even a kid knows. Rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't want it. Rule number one. So if you can correct, uh, you know, stain your drawdown, when the market was down 38%, this particular product was hardly down 22 or 24%. When the, so that was a down capture. It did very well in down capture. When the market went up, it went up 70% of the market. Another fund in this category is IPRU multi-asset fund. 
then there is ITRU asset allocator fund, and there is a quote, uh, quant multi asset fund. All these four funds have beaten the Sensex during the drawdown. So they've fallen much less than the Sensex. When it fell 32, they fell 22 to 31%. When the market went up, they captured 70 to 80% of the up move. So that over a 28, 27, 28 month period from 14 Jan 2020 to 20th June 2022, while the Sensex gave 25% return, they gave anywhere between 40 to 80% return. Okay. Interesting. Thanks for that, Nirav. Anand, what Pleasure. is your view on the same question? Uh, my view is, firstly, if you have your FD amount, don't shift it to equity because risk profile of both the products are different. First, understand your suitability, whether shifting your amount from FD to direct equity is uh, allowed by your suitability or not. Second is... It is no, you would well be in a debt product, by the way. Sorry? It could well be in a debt product. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. So, debt product... Only accrual based debt fund that to via STP of six months is uh, recommended right now. Maybe medium term kind of a fund. Uh, I would, uh, I am personally uh, not favoring long duration funds right now, looking at the interest rate cycles. That can be a good avenue if you want tax efficiency in your portfolio. Second, if you have some bonuses, as you rightly mentioned, that this is the time where people might be getting some bonuses, it is perfect time to do your SIP top ups. For example, if your monthly SIP is uh, of 1 lakh and you have bonus of 1 lakh additional, you can probably invest 1 lakh uh, amount equal to your SIP amount during this market fall. For one particular month, you can invest amount equal to your SIP amount for that particular month. So this way you are not overdoing as well and uh, you are not missing the opportunity also. And which funds you choose? Your existing SIP funds. I think over diversification at times kills a lot of returns. So there is no need to over diversify. And if you have already selected good four or five funds, you can probably top up in the same funds. Oh, that's an interesting advice too. But gentlemen, this was lovely. Thank you so much. I know uh, I know it, it involved a bit of timing the markets and a, and a bit of name calling for the funds as well. But sometimes these things help. And as I said, that our viewers will probably take these calls uh, after they do their own research. So uh, you need not be worried about it. But thank you for your time today, gentlemen. Neeraj, if I can come in for a second. Sure. Yeah, so I've been noticing people have been doing diversification, you know, so D-I-W-O-R. So, you know, if you have Indian equities, you don't need cryptos, you don't need any NFTs, and you don't need uh, penny stocks. I so just wanted to, uh, you know, use your show to give across this message. So 13% CAGR return will be practically 95% asset class in the next 10 years. No need to do diversification. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, well taken. Uh, but thank you so much for being today on the show and viewers, thanks for tuning into this leg of the Mutual Fund Show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye -bye. Take care.